Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz and GL Power Supplies. This presentation explains how to configure and use both basic and advanced functions of the NGL series power supplies. The NGL is a benchtop DC power supply, available either in one or two channel models. Both models support 20 volts and 3 or 6 amps per channel. In addition to advanced protection functions, the NGL also supports many other useful features, such as ramp and arbitrary output, statistics, logging, digital input and output triggers, and remote sensing. Furthermore, the NGL can also be operated as an electronic load or sync. The NGL is configured through a touchscreen interface, but remote control via USB, Ethernet, or GPIB are also possible. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll show you how to configure and use the NGL and its most important functions. Let's start with connectors. The NGL has two pairs of standard banana-style connectors on the front panel. In two-channel models, one set of outputs is used for each channel, and in one-channel models, the second set of connectors, colored black, are used for sense connections, something that we'll discuss a little later in this presentation. The NGL outputs are both floating and galvanically isolated. This means that the two channels in a dual-channel NGL can be used as separate and independent power supplies. This in turn makes it possible to connect channel outputs in series or in parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the NGL can provide higher voltages than would be possible with a single channel. And by connecting them in parallel, higher currents are supported. For example, we could combine two 20 volt channels in series in order to get an output voltage of 40 volts. Or we could combine two 6 amp channels in parallel for a combined output current of up to 12 amps. Voltage and sense connections can also be made on the rear of the NGL using terminal blocks. These contain sockets for both voltage and for sense wires. Note that both front and rear voltage connections should not be used at the same time. To enter voltage and current for each channel, start by pressing the home button. The values for voltage and for a current limit can be entered using the touch screen or using the rotary knob. Confirm values with either the check mark key or by pressing the knob. To enable output on a single channel NGL, simply press the output hard key. On a dual channel NGL, select each channel individually to enable it and then use output to turn on all enabled channels. In both cases, the channel key color indicates the operating mode, something we'll come back to in just a moment. The default dual channel NGL display shows both channels simultaneously, but the expand button can be used to view a single channel in the larger format used for single channel NGLs. In the expanded view, statistics in the form of max, min, and average power, voltage, and current are shown on the right. Stats can be reset and restarted by clicking on the stats counter. To return to the collapsed view, use the Collapse soft key. The NGL displays the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. For each channel, configured values are shown in boxes, and the measured or read back values are shown above them. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. Values in green indicate that the channel is operating in constant voltage mode and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's pause for a moment to explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if load resistance, and therefore current, change. Note that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance could therefore lead to a current that's high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns off power when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the power supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply operates in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the NGL. 
we configure the output voltage to be 2 volts and enter a current value of 400 milliamps. The NGL will hold the output voltage steady or constant at 2 volts, even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured current threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage and current are displayed in green. Now let's decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still remains constant at 2 volts while the output current changes, but only as long as the current limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the NGL automatically switches to constant current mode and reduces the output voltage to the point where the output current does not exceed the configured current limit of 300 milliamps. When operating in constant current mode, values of voltage and current are displayed in red. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases where we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes based on a user configured pattern or sequence. The NGL supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely ramp and arbitrary. Let's take a closer look at both of these. As the name implies, ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in the output voltage. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which the voltage remains constant. Ramp settings are configured on a per channel basis by pressing the settings key and then choosing channel and ramp. The ramp time must then be entered. Recall that this is the time needed to go from zero volts to the configured output voltage. After enabling ramp, the ramp icon will appear in the channel display. Unlike ramp, which linearly increases the voltage from zero to a defined value, arbitrary switches the NGL output between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. Each one of these levels has a user-defined value and duration, and this sequence can be repeated multiple times. To use arbitrary waveforms, a profile must first be defined. This can be done on the NGL using settings, device, arb editor. An arbitrary profile consists of a series of points with values for voltage, current, time, and whether or not interpolation is used between the points. The plus and minus buttons can be used to add or remove points from the table. Two additional parameters are also required. The first is repetition count, that is, how many times to repeat the sequence. If the repeat count is finite, the end behavior must also be defined. The output can be turned off, or the last value in the sequence can be held. Sequences created with ARB Editor can also be saved and loaded. Channel menus are used to select and enable arbitrary waveforms. Simply click on Arbitrary, select a profile to load, and then Enable. The arbitrary waveform will be started when the channel and output are enabled, and an icon will appear in the channel bar when an arbitrary sequence is being output. The next topic is protection functions. These are used to protect the attached load from excessive voltage, current, or power by disabling the output when a user-defined threshold is crossed. Protection functions are configured by pressing Settings, then the Channel, and Output. Note that protection functions are configured and enabled or disabled independently for each channel. Both overvoltage and overpower protection are activated when a user-defined voltage or power threshold is crossed. As with other forms of protection, the channel is turned off when protection is activated and output has to be manually restarted. Visual indications, in the form of blinking icons, are used to show when overvoltage or overpower protection has been activated. Overcurrent protection, also called an electronic fuse, is activated when the current drawn by the load exceeds a configured threshold. Note that unlike overvoltage and overpower, the current limit is not entered in the protection menu, but rather is taken from the main voltage and current settings. As before, if protection is activated, the channel is turned off and must be manually restarted. There are two delay parameters associated with an electronic fuse. Fuse delay time is the time between when the overcurrent threshold is crossed and when the output is deactivated. Fuse delay at output on is the amount of time the NGL will wait after power on before applying the fuse. This can be used to prevent the fuse from being activated by high inrush currents. In a dual channel NGL, a fuse on one channel can also be linked to the other channel. 
In this case, if overcurrent is activated on one channel, both channels are disabled. And like overvoltage and overpower, a blinking icon in the channel display indicates that overcurrent protection has been activated. Safety limits are another type of protection that limit the configurable range of output voltage and or current. Safety limits prevent the user from being able to configure or enter values outside of a defined range. They don't disable output like the other protection types discussed earlier, but an audible alert is sounded whenever a user tries to configure a value outside of these limits. Safety limits are configured and enabled per channel in the form of maximum and minimum values of voltage and current. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the NGL, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include output delay, remote sense, data logging, electronic load, digital triggers, and remote interfacing or a control. Normally, voltage is present at the outputs immediately after output is enabled. However, the NGL also allows you to configure a delay between when the output is enabled and when voltage is present at the output terminals. During this delay, the channel key blinks green and delay appears in the channel display. Next, let's talk about remote sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In remote sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, there's almost no current flow in these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using the sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. Remote sense is automatically enabled on the NGL when connected sense leads are detected. Sense connections, labeled S plus and S minus, are available on the front of the NGL201, and sense connections are available on the rear terminals for both NGL models. When remote sense is active, a small icon appears in the channel display. The measured or readback values of voltage, current, and power can be logged to a CSV or comma-separated value file. Logging is configured globally for all channels under Settings, Device, Logging. The logging interval and duration or mode are configurable, and the log data can be stored either on a USB stick or internally. To turn logging on and off, simply use the logging on off switch. There are three channel output modes on the NGL. Most often, the NGL is used as a source, that is, current flows out of the supply and is delivered to a load. However, the NGL output can also be set to sync mode. In sync mode, current flows into the supply, and the NGL will act as an electronic load. If output mode is left as auto, the NGL will either act as a source or as a sync, depending on the voltage present at the terminals. Note that in sync mode, current will be displayed as a negative value. Similar to source mode, in sync mode, the NGL display is green when operating in constant voltage mode, that is when the current flowing into the NGL is less than the set current. The NGL switches to constant current mode if the incoming current is being limited to a user configured value. The third mode is constant resistance mode in which the NGL looks like a fixed resistor with a user specified value. In this mode, the current flowing into the NGL is the external voltage divided by this configured resistance. The optional digital input output connector located on the rear of the NGL provides a variety of trigger in and out and event signals on different pins. These signals can be used to notify, control, or interact with other devices. For example, the trigger out voltage can be configured to change if the supply enters constant current mode. The digital I.O. interface supports a very wide range of functions, so please see the NGL documentation for a complete list of supported input and output actions. Another way that the NGL can interact with other devices is using its remote interfaces. The NGL supports three different methods of remote access, USB and LAN, and GPIB. All of these interfaces support programmatic control, in which standardized skippy commands can be used to configure the NGL and retrieve results. 
The LAN connection also enables a remote GUI via VNC, file transfer using FTP, and web browser access for administrative purposes. To learn more about using these remote access features, as well as how to create and execute programmatic control of the NGL, please see the user documentation. Let's end with a brief summary. Rodian Schwartz NGL Benchtop DC power supplies are available in both one and two channel models. The NGL is easily configured via the touchscreen and front panel, but can also be remotely controlled. Other useful features we've covered in this presentation include ramp and arbitrary output, different types of protection functions, remote sense, data logging, digital input output, and the ability to function as an electronic load or sync. This concludes our presentation, getting started with Rodian Schwartz NGL power supplies. If you'd like to learn more about the NGL or power supplies in general, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.